Guys, we're still talking about we having an excellent life with godly initiative. And we talked about excellence. Excellence is only found if God is taking the initiative. If you understand how to, to work it out, that God and only God is taking the initiative in your life, excellence will be a fruit. You don't need to strive for the excellence if you work with God where he is taking the initiative. He is taking the initiative in your challenges, in your success, in your business, in your relationships, in your circumstance. And that's what you need to face tomorrow. He is taking the initiative. Amen? Amen. So may God help us that we will understand that revelation, that we will run into that. Hallelujah. We spoke Sunday and a few Sundays already, so I don't want to repeat a lot of things about excellence and the excellence from the word and a lot of scriptures. I want you just to remember one. Isaiah 60, 15, we talk about God is making us excellent. And we will have an excellent life because of him. Now, many translations talk take excellence and translate it with glory and translate it with glory so when we say let your glory fall in this room we are saying god let your excellence fall in this room god will make your life glorious god will make your life excellent that's one of 20 names that you can put to the word glory because glory is God's majestic attractiveness. God is uncomparable holiness. Come on, we can take another hundred sentences to describe the word glory. But one of, one of the words with different translations many times when some translation says glory, others say excellence. Excellence is in the New King James with this verse. And I say, even Isaiah 61, Isaiah 61, you can write that down. If then so, if the Spirit of the Lord God is upon you, Jesus said that first. When he started with his ministry, he took that verse and he read the verse, that passage. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me for a purpose. We spoke with you about this also a few weeks ago. Yes, you have. When you became a Christian, when you gave your life to Christ, Holy Spirit came and he brought the rebirth of your spirit. Amen? Everything became new in your spirit. I'm a new creation. Everything became new in your spirit. Perfection is in your spirit. The fullness of God dwells in your spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit testify in your spirit. Romans 8, that you're a child of God. Amen. But your spirit needs to mature. You can be very, your soul can be a bully. Your soul can be very strong. There's a strong personality and that strong personality can be a curse from hell or that strong personality can be used by God if directed under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your soul can be in a negativity and it's on the ground, but, uh, but the joy of the Lord that's your strength is in your spirit. The love that is driving you, the, fear, the, the, the peace that is guiding you and protecting you is in your spirit. But instead of the, the peace that will guide me, that will guard my heart and my mind, the stress in my soul is winning. And I will honor the stress more than the peace in my spirit. I will honor the fear more than the perfect love in my spirit that must drive out all fear in my soul. The negativity, the depression, or whatever I go through under the circumstances, in my spirit is the joy of the Lord that is my strength. Look at the fruit of the Spirit, please, and see the amazingness of what God has placed in your spirit, the excellence, excellence of who God is that is in your spirit. But if you're not going to allow the Holy Spirit to take the initiative to bring forth the awesome beauty, the awesome excellence that's in your spirit, you will not see excellence in your relationships, your dreams, your strategies, your business, your circumstances coming forth. 
Because it's not first for your circumstances to change. It's first for you to change. And to become like him. So that you will look at your circumstances the way that your father is looking. What he feels. What he experiences. His thoughts. Remember, we said we have the mind of Christ. And amplified. And we do hold the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of God. Where? In your spirit. You have the mind of Christ. His way of thinking is in your spirit. The feelings, what do you feel about the politics? What do you feel about your business? What do you feel about your financial situation? It's all there. It's all there already in your spirit. So when we say, God, I come before you. And the word says, be still and know. It's for soul to be silent. It's for soul to behave yourself. Your own opinions, you feel depressed, it's okay. That's facts in your soul. But there's a truth in your spirit. Be honest. Be honest with your soul. Be honest with what you're going through. Be honest in your soul. There's compromise. Be honest in your soul. There's just this control of a reasoning. But from your spirit, there's a control that is from God. That's why God said, I'm looking for a people that will worship me in spirit and truth. That is not Holy Spirit. In, from their spirit with the truth in their soul that set them free so that from their spirit under guidance of Holy Spirit worship will be but to have intimate precious quality pure worship before God it is your spirit under the guidance of the Holy Spirit because he will speak into your spirit he will testify in your spirit hello you are still with me? So guys, sorry, we, we want to go with excellence. If we need to understand initiative, initiative will first happen in your spirit. Let's say initiative will happen in my spirit. So that excellence that's already in my spirit will come forth. A good sentence to write down. Let me wait two minutes while you are writing that down. <laughs> I hope you remember. Just ask your neighbor with humility and they will tell you. I'm waiting. <laughs> so, we said, we start with anybody? Initiative. Initiative must come from my spirit. Only if the initiative comes from my spirit... The excellence that is already in my spirit will come forth. Because then, if I honor the, the voice of the spirit, I will, I will have the capacity to overrule the voices in my soul. But when I'm tired and when I'm fed up or when I feel I'm run over, I, I, I don't know what to do anymore. That is when in my soul I need to wait upon the Lord. Get out of that soulless emotion, that thing that is not soulless emotion like bad, I want to steal, I want to lie, I want to lust, I want to... No, 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 no. Just all that nice ideas in your soul that can just kill you. You can destroy yourself. Get out of that place into the fullness and the beauty that God has placed in your spirit. And that is those who wait on the Lord. Wait before you do whatever your soul says. Wait on the Lord is, I come into the place where I will know what the Holy Spirit is saying in my spirit. Then those who wait on the Lord, they will renew their strength. Because now their strength is from Holy Spirit. Not by power, nor by might that is in your soul. But by my Spirit that is testifying in your spirit. That's Zechariah 4 verse 6. You have that. Okay, so you know that. That's why you don't write down. Zechariah 4 verse 6. If we can understand this dynamic, God will help us, man. So that God's initiative will become part of our lifestyle. And for that is I need to not just respect his voice. When I come into a place and I stress about, I need to learn how to hear his voice. And I'm actually in a performance to hear his voice. And I'm in this trouble and I need to know what God is saying. That's good. By God's grace, he will help you. 
By God's grace, he will get into the boat and deal with the storm. He didn't want to get in the boat. He wanted to pass the boat to the other side because he gave you the authority to deal with the storm. But if you don't know how to deal with the storm and you do it in the flesh by just trying to get all the water out and by his awesome mercy, he will still get into the boat. He will tune you and say, you little of faith. But he will be there. Praise God. Even in the next storm that he sends us into, not the devil, what he sends us into because he wants to show you his greatness. He wants to show you the excellence. He wants to show you the authority that he placed in you. So many times God wants to brag about himself. That's why he could send you in a storm. Because he has the faith. He has the faith. He has the faith in you that you will respond to him. You will see the awesomeness that is in your spirit. Are you with me? Now you became a child of God. There's just this innocent faith. And so is arrest, arrested and amazed at, at what God has done in our lives. And, and suddenly there's just things that are breaking through. Suddenly things are working. And then there comes a day that, I don't know if you experience it, as if, oh, there's some things now, a little bit wara wara in here, and I must face a lot of things. <sighs> That's when God is challenging you. That your spirit must mature. But your spirit must mature as you feed yourself with the word of God. Because the word of God, can you write down, the word of God is, will translate the feelings, the purposes, and the thought patterns of God that is in your spirit. It translates it into a language for you to understand. Between the awesomeness and the fullness and the mind of Christ, the feelings of God, the, the purposes of God, the thoughts of God that is in your spirit. You need a translator between your spirit and your soul. And the translator is the word of God. You don't get into the word. You don't find the translator. You don't understand the, the language of the translator. What a mess. You know why it's a mess? Because you have all the answers. You have all the breakthroughs. You have excellence in your spirit. You have the capacity to have excellent relationships, excellent future, excellent si situation at your workplace in the sense of not circumstances that change, first of all, but excellence that come through you in the wisdom that you speak, in the words that you speak, in the things that you pray, in the way that you relate, in the way that you position yourself. So that Isaiah 61 again. Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me for a purpose. Let's say, God has anointed you for a purpose. That's what you must tell yourself. Remember? Another one that you must write down. I ah, don't have it. Somebody give me that verse. How many times David is speaking to his soul? And we're going to get right in our prayer life. We're going to get right in our worship so that we can get the religious talk out out of our system because like we said in the past psalm 22 i just want to say 42 it says oh my soul why are you downcast hope on god him you will praise him you will still praise it's you from your spirit speaking to your soul you need to learn what, maybe we will do it in this camp, but I'm not sure. But where you must write down, not just what God is saying to you, what are you saying to yourself? You know how many times, and this is a different sermon for an hour, how many times it's written, and he said in his heart, that sounds freaky if that was an audible voice. What he said in his heart. Where's the vocal cords in your heart? No, he said in his heart, what are we talking about? Let me say like this. You have a, your heart. Physically, you have a heart. Great. And what you do with your heart emotionally and in your soul and with your spirit can determine a lot of what is happening in your physical heart. True. But now I can take my heart and even when we say in a worship song, here's my life, here's my heart, I give you my heart, 
I give you my soul. What am I doing? I say, God, I don't want to say anything in my heart that is not from you. I don't want to feel in my heart what is not the feeling in your heart. That is the result when I give my heart to him. Not for you to become heartless. <laughs> Hello. But to have a heart that will think as his heart is thinking. Are you with me? But now, that is where your heart operates. Oh, that sounds very technical. Operates from your spirit. My heart operates from a place. And that is from my spirit. My heart is given to God. Therefore... It's in the place where the fullness of God dwells. So what I feel in my heart is from the place of perfection from my spirit. Holy Spirit, testify in my spirit. Holy Spirit, testify in my spirit. From that, my spirit, I will worship him. And where is my heart? He's right in the center of that. He's right in the middle of that. My heart is right in the middle of that. My heart is consumed with his presence. My heart is consumed with his perfection. My heart is consumed with the mind of Christ. Consumed with the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of God. My heart is consumed because I choose that my heart will be there. So that practically is guarding your heart. Guarding your heart is not, your heart is just with hell that is around and all the devils and you must just guard your heart against the attacks of the enemy and all that other rubbish. And you're just constantly standing against the attack because you must guard your heart first of all your heart is in the place where the fullness of god dwells and that is protecting your heart and from that place the battle belongs to the lord from that place the battle belongs to the lord and he will guide you in how to sort out your soul and from this place where the fullness of god dwells and your heart is in that place you speak to your soul and you say hey why are you downcast? So, because you, the real you, the real you is not downcast. You are not downcast. Your spirit cannot be downcast with the fullness that dwells in your spirit. Your spirit that is perfect cannot be downcast. They say, I am a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. So on this place of spirit, there's excellence, excellence, excellence. And from that place of excellence, let from that place, let God take the initiative. Because in your soul, when things are not lacquer, when things are not right, it's going to be some other chocha that will take the initiative. The voice of your flesh, the voice of your circumstances, the voice of your stress, the voice of your anxiety, the voice of the negativity, the voice of lust, the voice of compromise. Whatever voice will take the initiative. Don't stand there and fight the voices. Get your heart back into the place where the fullness of God dwells, and that is in your spirit. So therefore, many, many psalms that says, Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Now you can put your hands in the air, yes. But it's like you, you're telling God, God, I'm getting my soul in line because I'm actually speaking to my soul. I'm not speaking to God. Are you with me? I'm looking at you, and I have a relationship with you, but there's many things in my soul that is not in line in my relationship with you. And I'm looking at you, and I say, I will put my soul in line to understand how to be having an accurate relationship with you. So that is, bless the Lord on my soul. The, the old example uh, that we always use in some of the subjects that you, I believe in Jesus' name, going to do in the training conference, Praise and Worship Lifestyle and with Dream to Reality. The first time God really tuned me about this, I worship, was a worship leader for about 20 years. And then after about 10, 15 years, God, Holy Spirit said to me, what are you singing? Why are you singing that? Where's your focus? A lot of times, a lot of things that he just <laughs> questioned me. And it wasn't the spirit of condemnation. It was the spirit of God that had to bring correction because I'm a, not an illiterate illegitimate child but a true son of God that that means is the father disciplines the one that is not an illegitimate child may God help you that you will hear his discipline 
And no, it's not because of the mistake, but because of your potential. Amen. Amen. And in that place, and I'm singing that one song. Um, Come, now is the time to worship. Come. You know the song? Now is the time to give your heart. And I was like, you know, everybody hands and hey, they're looking at God and I was singing. Come, now is the time to, and you're telling God, come, he must come. Now is the time to worship. Who must, God must worship who? Come, now is the time to give, God must give his heart to who? Hello? Now is the time to give your heart. Please, Lord, you must give your heart to somebody. How the freak can you sing that? Like that. And it was okay, but then I had to, even if I do that, but more just closing my eyes and say, I'm telling my soul. I'm telling myself. I say in my heart, Cornelius, come. Now is the time to worship. In my spirit there's perfection and I'm tuning my soul. soul. Come, now is the time to worship. That emotions, emotions running wild. Come, now is the time to give your heart. That heart that you put in different things in this week. Come. Just that you are. Don't come in performance because you've messed up in the week. Don't come and try to come in performance. No. No. But I'm tuning my soul. I'm telling my soul. I'm encouraging my soul. I'm encouraging the souls of others so you can open your eyes even. And we did it one or two or three times, but it was too uncomfortable for a lot of guys. But we you open your eyes and you say, come. That's real. Now, that's not fake then. When you open your eyes and you say, Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are. Hello? Hello? And then, one day every time will confess you are God. And when he's first person, that is when you lift and you look into his eyes. You look into his heart. And there's heart-to-heart connection. But because we sing so many times words and we don't realize what we are singing, then our words can be there and our hearts can be there. And, this, and it, doesn't, it doesn't have to make sense what we say and where our heart is. It doesn't have to make sense. Whoa. And we teach ourselves in the church when we're together how to be confused. In what we say to God, in how we react to God. But my body language must correspond with my words that is genuine from my heart, from a place of perfection in my spirit, as I will worship Him in spirit and in the vocabulary, according to the translator, the Word of God, that will translate the fullness that's in my spirit for me to understand. And now my soul will understand. That's why Romans, you write that down, 12, verse 2 says, be renewed. Be renewed. Can I do that again? Be renewed. No, I don't have hair, so I can do that. Be renewed. Hello? In your, in your mind, you must be renewed. What, what, what? I get the thoughts of God in my mind. The translator is translating it, what is in my spirit, translating it so that I'm filled with the thoughts of God. Is there other thought? 2 Corinthians says, hey. Take that other thought into captivity. Into captivity. Ne? Neem die gedagses gevange tot gehoorzaamheid aan Christus. But how can you take it captive if you don't know it's a wrong thought? You can only know it's a wrong thought if you know the right thoughts. If you don't know the thoughts of God, entertain all the rubbish thoughts from hell and your flesh and circumstances. Entertain the thoughts. And your mind becomes a squatter camp for all the most rubbish thoughts that you can think of. And you will not get it out. You will not get it out. Because you don't allow Holy Spirit to translate the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes, the words of God. To translate it. But you know, the enemy will be very, 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 very faithful to translate. 
and interpret your circumstances, to translate to you your failures, why you not fail just, but that you are a failure. He must get into the place of attacking your identity. Attacking your identity. Attacking your identity. Because identity determines destiny. You believe you're a chicken, but actually you're an eagle. You will scrub, scrub, scrub in the ground for Allah and a pitta, but you're going to frack, uh, uh, what's the word? You're going to die, you know? Because you cannot live on pitta alone. No, you cannot even at all live on pitta because you must eat the mice. No, that sounds bad. Snake, that's even worse. You must eat the fish. <laughs> the eagle must eat... The right stuff. Are you with me? Is jullie nog hier? Nee, yo, dit is nog ochtend. Is jullie nou moeg? Moeg geloof van die kapel. Oké. You are still with me? No. So get renewed in your mind. Everybody say, I will renew my mind. No, you must do that. I'm looking at you. I must renew my mind. Okay. Right. If that is not renewed, you can make a lot of stupid mistakes. Don't know if there's a clever mistake, but a stupid mistake is a double mistake, uh, maybe. Because, you know, a stupid mistake is because you have the answer already. If you make a mistake, that's something. But if you already have the answer in your heart, and you still make the mistake, that's a stupid mistake. Because you already have the answers locked up in your spirit. Excellence is in your spirit. Let's go back to the introduction, Isaiah 61. So the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. And that anointing is the hand of the Father is upon me. Jesus stood up when he started his ministry and said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. What is he saying? The hand of my Father is upon me because he has anointed me. Who? The Father has anointed him. He spoke Immediately in his ministry, in the context of the Trinity. In the context of the Trinity. He came and said, me, I am the Son of God. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Father has anointed me with the Spirit for a purpose. To bring set free the captives, to do this, to do this, to do that, to do that. And all of that. So that what at the end of the day? Me and you will be set free. And so that what at the end of the day? You will be a planting of the Lord. Where God will plant you in that place. A planting of the Lord. An oak of righteousness. A tree of righteousness in that different translation. A tree to display the splendor. For the display, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Let's say, a planting of the Lord. For the display of his splendor. And that splendor, in different translations, talk about glory. My brother, my sister, in the context of to display his excellence. Do you know where you are? You better make sure that you are planted in the right place. Because in that place, not so that you have a nice job, so that everything is fine, so that all circumstances are falling in line, and so that this and that and that, and God give you the desire of your heart. No, the desire of your heart is to fulfill the purpose why the Father has anointed you with the Holy Spirit. Woo. You, you. No. He has anointed His Son. And where are you? In His Son. And His Son is in you. And the anointing from the Father is only through the mandate of His Son, Jesus Christ. You are part of the mandate only if you are in Christ and Christ in you. That's the only place for you to understand your calling, your destiny. Where in that place, God can take the initiative. And He will take the initiative with the excellence that is placed in you. The glory, the splendor. Because... He has placed it in you because you're supposed to display his splendor, display his excellence. You are called as an ambassador to display his splendor, display his excellence. So you don't run for excellence, first of all, so that you have excellence. You run for excellence because you are here with that mandate. Amen. 
And he wants you to, if he wants you to display his excellence in the most horrific circumstances, then you do it because he has the faith. My father has the faith in me. Let's say my father has the faith in me that I will display his beauty, his excellence. There where he has placed you in the school, in the business, in the challenges, in the that, where you must sort out other people's rubbish and where all these stuff happen. Oh, and when I say that, I say, God, please start with me. Help us all. Help us all. But not from a place of condemnation and discouragement. Because you find the courage through the cross. Right there. Courage through the cross. Remember that. Everybody say courage through the cross. Through the cross. Because the scripture said you can come boldly. Boldly. Not discouraged. Boldly you can enter the throne through the blood of Christ. So that you can be restored. And the more you are in his presence, the more you will be changed into his likeness. You'll be changed into excellence. Being in his presence, understand the translation of that what is in your spirit. Let's go into that place. Because you will worship him in spirit, your spirit in the presence of his spirit, and in truth. That's how you will worship God. God is seeking. God is looking for those worshipers. John 4. He's seeking. He's looking for those worshipers that will worship him with that type of excellence. Be that worshiper, my brother, my sister. Be that worshiper. Standing before your father. Standing before the man in your life. From Zechariah 6 verse 12. Behold the man. Behold the man. Amen. Amen. Give me the time. Where are we? How long are we already here? That means, I don't have a cooking clue when we started. Nobody knows. Nobody needs an excellent break. <laughs> okay. Can I... Can I just say three things, and then we're going to take a break, and then we're going to facilitate a thing where you're going to hear from God a few excellent stuff, I believe, I trust. Part of my day with for this whole week and for this whole weekend, Zechariah 2, and I want you, please, please, if you have a Bible, just mark it, even with tippics or whatever, on your phone. But Zechariah 2, 3, and 4. Two, three, and four. And we will most probably end with that even on Sunday. Zechariah 2. Then I looked up and there before me was a man with a measuring line in his hand. I asked, where are you going? He answered me, to measure Jerusalem, to find out how wide and how long it is. Allow God, allow God to evaluate that what is in your life. While the angel who was speaking to me was leaving, another angel came to meet him and said to him, Run, tell the young man, Jerusalem will be a city without walls because of the great number of people and animals in it. And I find myself, and I myself will be a wall of fire. Run. There will be no walls. Whatever wall you want to build around you, whatever wall in your personality, whatever wall you want to build around your heart. Whatever wall you want to build around your heart, and that what is not from God, you must deal with that wall. Are you with me? Because God himself wants to be the wall of fire around you. Because what will there be if he is the wall of fire? I myself will be the wall of fire around it, declares the Lord, and I will be its glory within. I will be, myself will be the excellence within when the the wall around you is the fire then excellence will be seen in you and through you you are still here may god help you may god help you 
but then I need to break down the walls. I need to break down that walls. I can sit in, the, in discouragement because the walls that was once, that was the walls of Jerusalem that had to be built, the walls that, that is important to be in, intact in every way. And if I don't, if you don't hear God's initiative, his initiative, because his initiative is not to, in that situation, to rebuild the walls. It's not the initiative to rebuild the walls. Now, you can run with a vision to build, rebuild the walls. That's according to Nehemiah. You can have 100 scriptures about how you're going to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. There's a context, but that's a facet in the word of God. But you can build some walls for the Lord, for the Lord. And you lay down your life for the Lord. And meanwhile, God is waiting for you because you're wasting your whole life building walls that God didn't want you to build. Because he was waiting for you so that he can be the wall of fire. And in that place where he is the wall of fire, he himself will be the excellence within he himself will be the glory with you. Know, my brother, my sister, that's something to take an hour or more with God. Where you go and ask him. We're supposed to be able to facilitate that, but then we, maybe we're not going to have that time. But please, I plead with you, go and sit with God and say, God, what is the walls? What are the walls that I'm building that is like the walls of Jerusalem? But it's not, it's not from you. You don't want me to do that. You are waiting for me to stop with my, with my wasting time, with my dead works, with a pure attitude in the sense of with, with a genuine attitude. I do this for God, but I have a waste of a life building walls that is not supposed to be. That's not the right timing. It's not the time of Nehemiah. It's a time through Zechariah where he wants to be the wall of fire. Unfortunately, wall of fire means... We burn all the things out that is not from him. Huh. So when I allow God to bring that wall closer to me, <laughs> huh. and you are, just think of, of yourself, you know, you're in the middle of the fire, and you see around you is just fire. And your flesh, not your spirit, your flesh can stress when that fire is closing, closing down on you. And the more you are prepared to deal with a flesh that's even anxious in the presence of God's fire, the more the beauty, the excellence will come forth. The more God himself will make his dwelling place with you. Because that is four verses further of that same chapter. Sing and rejoice. For see, I'm coming and I will make my home with you. Shout and be glad. This translation, verse 10. Write it there. Shout and be glad, daughter of Zion, for I am coming and I will live among you. I will live among you. If God started there, that I will be the glory. Me, myself, will be your beauty. Me, myself, will be your excellence. In the middle of the place where you allow me to burn away all the flesh, all the rubbish that is not from me. So that you are surrounded by a wall that is from me. A wall that is defined by my fire. A wall, you need to write that, defined by my fire. That wall, the fire determines how the wall will look and how far it will be from you. Okay, you're still here? Come, come, verse 6 again. Come, come, flee from the land of the north. Get out of the places that is not from God. Get out of that place of stress. Get out of that place, declares the Lord. For I have scattered you to the four winds of heaven, declares the Lord. Come, I escape you who live in daughter Babylon. For this is what the Lord Almighty says. After the glorious one, the excellent one, has sent me against the nations that have plundered you. For whoever, whoever touches you, touches the apple of his eye. He is so sensitive. He is so aware of everything you're going through. He's so aware of everything. You don't have to remind him. You know, some guys in prayer, they start to tell God everything as if God knows nothing. God, this and this and this and this and, and this and this. And I'm, I, I'm feeling this. Okay, psychologically, it's good that you, that you get it out. That you speak it out. 
in that sense, good. But understand in prayer also, it's not just God, come and do this, come and do that, come and do that. It's a surrender. It's a telling him why you love him. It's a declaration of why you believe he's awesome. He's awesome. He's awesome. And even if you feel this other rubbish is awesome, even if you feel condemned to even speak to God, start to give him praise because he's worthy. Even you feel like rubbish, you feel ashamed about certain things, still God is worthy. If you believe, even in the place of depression and rubbish, that you cannot even speak to God, that is if you only speak to God because of what he must do for you and how you commit to him. But start in a place of acknowledging his awesomeness, of acknowledging who he is. Your breakthrough is as you enter with praise. Praise not about you doing everything right or you doing everything wrong or you feeling good to give him praise or you feeling bad. You don't want to praise and God knows my heart. Yes, he knows your heart and that's the problem. And the problem is not you must enter his courts with a heart that is just everything right. No, you enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Go and write down this definitely you will go beyond five things that you are thankful for. You can, I don't know, stop at 100, 100 or something like that. But come into that place. Are you with me? Why? God is so aware of everything that's happening in you. And he wants you to be aware of that. He wants you to know that he's in control. You don't understand why things happen. And you know, sometimes we think our healing is in the fact that we will understand what happened. That is so, that is so, that is so. But God is pleased when you walk by faith. So you, Spirit, you're the Spirit. Spirit, Spirit Daniel, Spirit David. It sounds freaky, but that is who you are. You can, you can walk it out. Even if soul is going through whatever turmoil. And you can still honor and praise God. You don't understand in your soul why you had to go through. God, if, if I'm the apple of your eye and you were so aware of what's happening in my life and I ask you to change things. Where were you when this happened? Where were you when that happened? Where were you in all? I don't understand in my soul. And so for 90% of the things, maybe not going to get any answer. But still, by faith, righteous will walk by faith. God is pleased by faith. I will be saved by faith. I will overcome by faith. Because faith is an expression of the word. Of the word. I, I, I'm just going with God's thoughts, with his purposes, with his feelings. I'm going with that, and God is pleased with that. Even though I don't understand that. In heaven, I have eternity to find out what really happened. But for now, God says, I need you to walk by faith. So find you in that place. Find you in that place of coming just to know him. Not to understand what happened, first of all. But to understand who he is. Who he is. Because your identity determines your destiny. If you find your identity in your circumstances, very successful way to mess up your life. If you want to do it that way. That of mine. Okay. So then it says, shout and be glad. For I'm coming and I will live among you, declares the Lord. Many nations will be joined to the Lord in that day. And will come, become my people. I will live among you. And right at the end, be still. Be still before the Lord. All mankind. Because he stood up from his holy dwelling. God will work. But for that, be still. Get into the place of respect and having manners. That be still. So many times. You can write there. Be still. Has to do with respect and having manners. So I'll say, yes, Chris. I'll say. Be still has to do with, I have respect for God. I will have good manners. I will not throw a tantrum because he must first explain. 
who, who, who are you? Are you the judge and he is the accused and he must first explain himself before you will walk out there with him? No, that's arrogance. That's arrogance. Be still and know that he is God. Be still. Wait. In the concept of be still, the same concept is to wait upon God. And in that waiting is because I have respect for God and I have good manners in his presence. There's protocol. Protocol in his presence. Let's say protocol in his presence. 